what's going on everybody excited for a card show today it's been a minute since there's been a card show around here so i am excited to go over and pick my dad up we're gonna head up to auburn california together and we're gonna check out this show it's not a super big show but I know a few of the dealers that are planning on being there and they almost always have vintage cards. So I am excited for that. So head over, pick up my dad, head up to Auburn. It's about an hour drive from where I live and we'll check it out. All right, so in we go to the Auburn Card Show. Now this is the bigger of the two rooms. There's my dad at the bottom of the screen. And then the second smaller room as well. About 55 tables or so. And right off the bat, I found a vintage dealer. And we have some vintage football stuff. A little bit of vintage basketball as well. But the majority of his stuff was vintage baseball. A lot of cool 56 tops baseball up there in SGC holders. You'll see I take a closer look at some of those here in a minute. Got some nice Clementes there. A lot of maize at the top of this particular case. Wide variety of stuff. Several years. A lot of 52 tops as well. Those are always fun to see. And again, maize across the top there. A lot of Willie Mays in this part of California. Got the cool satchel page, 53 tops at the top, some mantles across the middle. And I mean, just a lot of good stuff. And he had a, a big box of stuff, which I ended up going through here a minute as well, you'll, you'll see. So first off, I asked to look at that 56 tops, Sandy Koufax. And I have had my eye on getting a 56 Kofax for a while. This one was really nice. For a 3.5, it seemed to be undergraded to me. It's tough because when you look at comps, you know, there's such a wide range. 320 seemed a little high to me. And then here's a 56 Clemente in a 4. He was asking 500. I actually thought the Kofax in a 3.5 was a little bit nicer than the four Clemente. And I really thought about that Kofax for quite a while. Talked to him about it, tried to find a price, couldn't quite get there. And then this 65 Mantle, it's a little off center, but I felt like it was super sharp for a three. Now this is Jeff Guy. He has been at several of the shows that I have featured in the past. So some of his cases may look familiar. If there's anything on here in any of these cases that you see, feel free to reach out to him. He does a lot of whatnot sales as well. And he's got a really cool box of other singles, raw stuff. Cool Bly Levin rookie there, 65 Maris, 65 Banks. I really like the 65 set. This card caught my eye. I mean, you got Hank Aaron, Richie Allen, and Willie Mays on the same card. And, I mean, it's just Hall of Famer after Hall of Famer. Really good stuff. A lot of early 60s, late 50s in here. And I really like his, uh, his table whenever I see him at a show. I always take the time to go through it. A friend of mine walked up right here. And he starts telling me the story about how he um, got a Dream Team basketball signed. But he actually did it. He actually went signature by signature and was telling me about how he got each of the autographs. So that is quite a prized possession he has. To have the 92 Olympic Dream Team signed by all the players and coach daily so again as i continue moving through the box um and i skip around a little bit but sometimes i really feel like if you're willing to dig through boxes like this you will find bargains i do make a couple of purchases today and both of them took some digging they were not cards sitting out in cases 
that I ended up buying. So I really think you got to take the time to go through these types of boxes when you see them. Again, lots of good stuff. You got some 75 Gibsons. You got a Jim Rice rookie, more Gibsons. I mean, when you go through boxes like this, sometimes I always look at them and I think, man, how much is the contents of just this box worth when you're looking at 30 to 20 to 50 dollar cards to 70 dollar cards all in one box it's kind of crazy a lot of these leader cards these particular ones were 71s and then some really nice p rose you can see me kind of stop they're super sharp but again, we're talking late 70s at this point. So it's about 15 years into his career. You got some early George Bretts. And so, yeah, I mean, again, I really, I really encourage people to go through those boxes because sometimes that's where the hidden gems are. And quite frankly, sometimes that's where cards are that haven't been repriced recently. So if there's a card that's gone way up, Sometimes the cards in these boxes were marked a year or two ago, and they've just been in the box ever since. So that's one of the reasons you can sometimes find really good deals there. Really nice 58 Whitey Ford there. I like the looks of that card. You got some Ozzy Smith, and there's quite a lot of good stuff in here. I love the 54 set, so whenever I see some 54s, those are exciting. He had quite a few throughout this particular box. I'm keeping moving through here. Again, a lot of good stuff in that particular box. And this is me a little bit later. Got a cool couple of Rizzutos in there and Clementes and Kofax. I mean, Mays. A lot of eye candy. I like the looks of that 54 Bowman set. I think that is a underappreciated set that at some point I think people will start to like a little bit more, but I really am a big fan. There's another one of those 54 Bowmans. That one's Adobe. Yeah, so my buddy's talking about how he got a that autograph ball, and he worked on the stat crew for the Sacramento Kings. It's one of the ways he had it in. You got a Kurt Flood rookie there on the top. And I mean, again, you're just going through Hall of Famer after Hall of Famer. And you got some Younts. Again, it's everything from like that 75 there all the, back, all the way back to some early Bowmans, 51 Bowmans and stuff. So I decided to move along and keep looking and Never seen this dealer before, so I checked out his case. He had some vintage stuff, especially in this case here. Some of it raw, a lot of it graded. You know, you got that Aaron uh, All-Star up there. You got some Pete Roses. You got that cool Koufax, 58 Willie Mays. Again, you're always going to see lots of Willie Mays stuff in Northern California. And then again, he had a pile of stuff, so... Got a 75 Mini and a 75 regular Hank Aaron. And then a lot of those rookie cards from my childhood from Sandberg and Mattingly. A lot of Nolan Ryans. And a second year Reggie Jackson. I really like the 70 and 71 Reggie Jacksons. I actually like the 71 Reggie Jackson probably the most. And then some football cards. These were pretty much all Walter Payton cards, and they were super sharp. And I looked for a price on them, and I even flipped them over and said, well, maybe there's a price on the back. There wasn't. I might have made a play on them, but sometimes I just don't want to ask the price. And when they're not marked on the front or the back, sometimes I just move on. And so move on I did, and... There's that second year Joe Namath I actually was talking about in a video recently. A lot of good stuff in this case. You got that Cepeda rookie. Bunch of really, really nice 57 
baseball there. Nice Warren Spawn. Cool Mazeroski rookie. Got some of the 64 Giants there. And then some basketball. We got a Clemente rookie in second here. But this top case was really the one that had the best stuff. Got that Ernie Banks rookie. You know I like that one. And then he had a box with some 20% off of the sticker price. So I'm like, well, let's take, let's take a look here. Again, I think digging through the boxes is sometimes where you're going to find the best deals. And it's just funny that you can go anywhere from a middle 80s or late 80s basketball card to the next card is going to be a you know like a Bowman card so you never know what you're going to find in a box like this that card kind of caught my eye compared to comps it was you know kind of in the ballpark but remember it's 20% off of that so it's going to be just under $45 so again these are the prices but it's 20% off of that that K-line is kind of nice looking but it is a BVG holder. A little off center, though. A little bit of everything in a box like this. Again, to me, that hunt is part of the fun. And this Elson Howard, a little high on the price, but I've always liked the 57 Elson Howard card. 40 bucks, 20% off, so it's really $32. And it was in a six. Seems pretty reasonable, actually. But I kept on moving. Got the Joe DiMaggio autograph there in the middle. And then I always love finding vintage boxing cards. There's something about vintage boxing cards back when boxing was huge. And this was at Dion's table. The big card show in Northern California is Dion's show. The Fairfield Card Show, September 29th to October 1st. So if you are anywhere in Northern California, this is the, the show you want to be at. 350 tables. So I went on to the next table next to him. And as I'm looking through the case here, I said, I recognize that voice. That voice sounds familiar to me, and it was the Sports Card Radio guys. What's up, man? How are we doing? So, talked to them for a little bit. They've got a huge YouTube channel with a big following. They are really entertaining guys, no doubt about that. I always have fun when I see them at shows, talking to them. And then I went over. And kept on digging. Again, it seems like shows nowadays, lots of piles, lots of boxes, and digging is where the deals tend to happen. I was talking to this dealer, and he could not have been nicer. He recognized me from my channel and was just really, really kind and complimentary and genuinely made my day by some of the things that he had to say. So it meant a lot. Okay. And I do occasionally, you know, see people that will recognize me or stop me, which is always fun. And when somebody has something nice to say, it, it really does mean a lot. So then I went over to this box, and the guy said, every card in the box is $5. And I started seeing some vintage football cards, and I'm like, wait, Marcus Allen rookie cards are going for 5 bucks now? And there were a bunch of them. And they were pretty nice. And, and then we got a 70 Bart Star. So I start making a pile. Usually what I'll do is, is make a big pile, and then I take a closer look at the cards after. And, I mean, even that one there, I mean, some of these had centering issues, and I try to stay with the centered stuff. A cool Larry Zonka. But and we're talking some really good vintage football stuff at 5 bucks a pop. So, again, I start working on that pile. And then I start going and taking a closer look at the pile that I've made. I mean, you got a Bubba Smith rookie. I mean, there was some good stuff in here. You got a Bob Greasy. And uh, so, yeah, I, I mean, literally, you never know when you go through a box like this what you're going to come across. Oh, no, no, no. 
Sonny Jorgensen's. I mean, that's a 69 Johnny Unitas, and that thing looks really nice. Like, really nice. So I pulled that aside. Had Deion Sanders rookie, Harry Long rookie. These are five bucks a pop. And, you know, even, you know, Bobby Lane's, I'm looking at, I'm thinking to myself, wait a second, Dick Buckus. I mean, there's some really cool stuff in here for five bucks a pop. I could, I could drop some money at a table like this. So I was trying to focus on some of the older stuff, some of the bigger names, some of the centered stuff, some of the higher, um, higher quality as far as condition stuff. And then, you know, there were some Michael Irvin rookies mixed in. And then this, this kind of caught my eye. This is not something you see every day. Some sort of Johnny Unitas. Looks like kind of like a game card. Not something that you see every day. So I set that one aside. And then there were more Irvin rookies. Yeah, I don't know what that is either. Digging, I mean, you got Warren Moon rookies. I remember as a kid. In the late 80s, Warren Moon was having a huge season, being at a card show and seeing that card and wanting it. And it was unaffordable for me because I think they were asking about 30 bucks at the time. And now there's a pile of them in a $5 box 30 years later. And you got Ronnie Lott rookies in there. So I'm like, well, I mean, I have a Ronnie Lott rookie, but they're $5. So don't I have to get another one? I mean, for $5, because, you know, the other thing is when you buy a card um, online, you got to pay for shipping and you're going to have to pay some tax. So if you find a card like this online for, say, $8, you're going to pay, you know, 2 to $4 to ship it, $1.50 or so in tax. And so now all of a sudden you're looking at, you know, almost 15 bucks for an 8 or $9 card. But when you're at a show, and you don't have to pay tax, you don't have to pay shipping, and here's some more Marcus Allen rookies. Uh, but when you're when you're at a show, you just and it's five bucks. It's like, well, that's what the shipping cost would be. So it's I really look for some of the lower priced stuff at card shows to eliminate such a huge percentage of the cost being shipping and tax again i keep looking and it's just like hall of famer after hall of famer we've got a late 60 that's a 69 meredith and you know it's kind of it's kind of crazy but again these are the types of times you really can get some deals is at a show so again i've got a big pile I haven't looked at condition yet i just kind of Pulled aside some cards I'd be interested in. So now I've worked my way through everything. And I'm kind of separating what I want to do and what I want to not do. So I've got that Warren Moon, which I thought was the best of the bunch. It looked about perfect to me. And I'm choosing between the Marcus Allen that I like. I mean, I suppose I could have gotten all of them. And I like the lot. And then the Unitas, the 69 Unitas is so nice. And then these two 70 Bart Stars, I mean, they look pristine. Dean, like really, really nice, like high grade cards, and they're five bucks. Now I know the 1970 Bart Star is not a card that you're gonna, you know, have to spend a lot of money on. But when you get one in that condition, and again, you don't gotta pay for shipping, you gotta don't gotta pay for taxes, and you can just get it for five bucks. I'm gonna get both of them. That's what I'm gonna do. So I'm going through. I've got about seven cards. So you said, I don't know if I want that. Uh, I mean, you were saying five each. If I got these six, what would you do for me? You do 20 bucks? So I offered him 20. He was saying five apiece. There were six of them, which would be 30. I was hoping he'd come back with 25. You're at 30. How about we do 30 and I'll give you that stamp? You give me the stamp? 30 bucks. So he countered me with full price, but he would throw in that Unitas kind of flyer card that I didn't know much about. And I felt like that was a good deal. So we went ahead and did it. 
That was the first deal of the day. For thirty dollars, got seven cards. Uh oh, do you need change now? And we were off and running at this point. So I had more. I had a lot more to be digging through. So off I went Thanks to again. the next table. But first, let's take a closer look at what I picked up. So again, I told you I thought these Bart Star seventies were nice. I mean, look at that thing. That is as pack fresh as they come. They are tough to find centered, and you can see what a nice one goes for. I mean, that one is $11 on the recent eBay sale, but this one's no tax, no shipping, and I think it's nicer. I mean, these cards, I think, have a really good chance at at least, I mean, an eight for sure, um, especially the first one. This one's got a little bit of centering issues, but these are a couple of really, really nice cards. We got the 69 Unitas. Again, this is really nice. This card goes for, you know, $25 to $30. And again, I don't think they're as in good a condition as this one. This guy that was a collector had some pristine stuff. So, I mean, I saw this card at the first, the first case I showed you today had one of these that didn't look that nice for $50. I just got it for five. And then we got the Ronnie Lott rookies. Again, that's like a $10 card, but Got it for five bucks and no fees. And then we've got the Marcus Allen. Again, about you know, an eight to ten dollar card, but it's a card I've always wanted. It's it's always been on my I've always been on my list. I just have never gotten around to buying it. And then, you know, the Warren Moon is, you know, about a ten dollar card or so. And so I went ahead and picked that one up for five. And then this was the throw in card. And again, I think it comes from like a, a game or something. It's it's 1969 is the copyright date. You know, I found a couple on eBay. They were asking about 30 bucks, but, you know, who knows? It's Johnny Unitas. It's a card, and it was thrown into the deal. So I was pretty happy with that deal. So I kept on moving along and went back over to the next case, and there was some good stuff in here. Got that Nolan Ryan rookie. Got a Burke Ross uh, Jackie Robinson. We got my favorite there, that 54 Banks, a rookie Bob Gibson, a rookie Sandy Koufax. That is quite a row of Hall of Fame rookie cards. And they had a box as well. And there were a bunch of T206s in there. And a lot of them were, you know, 40 to $70. So I kind of kept digging through. And he got 69 Tom Seaver, and which is a very cool card. Again, a lot of T206s. Now, some of them were in okay condition, and some of them were fairly beat up. And the price seemed to be about the condition more than who it was. I think they're fair prices. They weren't low enough for me to go after, but they were in pretty darn good shape. Again, Clemente, got a Mantle, 58 All-Star, and Hank Aaron. Again, I love boxes like this because not only are there a lot of deals hidden in there, but also you never know what the next card is going to be. It is worth going through these it shows. This is what shows are all about. Talking to the guy next to me about Willie McCovey. Speaking of, there was a Willie McCovey card. Uh, he purchased a Willie McCovey card and was talking about how he got to play golf with him one time. Wow. That's awesome. Again, that's a really good condition. I mean, when I say really good condition, it's like a three T206. I pulled it aside to take a closer look a few minutes later. Yeah, it's a pretty common back and... It's nothing crazy, but, you know, whenever you're talking about a T206 in pretty good condition for 60 bucks or so, it's at least worth considering. Again, they're just kind of all scattered in there. I feel like I saw a lot of 71 tops baseball at this show, and 75 tops showed up a lot, too. Not 100% sure what the coincidence is there, but, but again, more T206s and pretty low condition, but 
still T206s. So as I'm continuing to dig through this box, I uh, looking for my gem. Again, I had several people come up and say hey today if you saw me and said hey, thank you for doing that. It's always fun. And if you didn't come say hey, I hope that next time you will. It's 60 Willie Mays. I mean, really good stuff. You got some Kel a Kellogg's card in there. Bob Feller. I mean, you got everything from Tito Six to Bowman's to Kellogg's cards from the 70s. So that is the owner of True Sports Cards and Collectibles in Rockland. He's a good guy. He's put on some of the shows that I've featured in the past. This is his table. They've got a good shop up there just northeast of Sacramento. They're fairly regular at a lot of the shows in the Sacramento region. But if there's anything in here that you see, feel free to reach out to them. And I'm sure they'd be willing to work something out with you. They have a lot of in-store signers at their shop. They've had, you know, anything from Raleigh Fingers in their shop signing to... Uh, who else have a uh, Jason Williams basketball player? Jason, well, uh, Jason Williams of the Sacramento Kings basketball player, Jason Williams. You've had a lot of guys, and uh, it's kind of cool to have in store visits and autograph guys, which they try to do a lot, which is very cool. More Mays and Clemente and Estrimsky and a Fergie Jenkins rookie. A little bit rough condition, but it's a card that I'd like to get at some point. You got some Gaudi. I mean, again, a little of everything. There you go. Tobacco cards that go back over 100 years. I've got one more purchase coming up here in... A few minutes. I had two deals today that I made. And I really liked that vintage football deal that I showed you a minute ago. I got a nice Warren Spawn there. Another Warren Spawn. I love the 53 Bowman Color Warren Spawn. One of my favorite cards. That one's a little soft for me. For me, I either need it pretty well centered all the way around or pretty decent corners. One or the other. That one was a little off top to bottom and pretty soft corners which is why I didn't go for it but I do love the card it is one of my favorites again more of those 71 tops another Fergie Jenkins rookie that's a cool card as well It was crowded in there. Anybody who says that the hobby is not alive was not in this room today because it was warm and it was packed. It was hard to even walk through the aisles. It was so packed today, which is great that we have so many people active in the hobby. So I'm winding my way down. Oh, there's a Goose Gossage rookie. I'm winding my way down through the last few cards in this box before I make my last few stops of this particular show. Again, nothing that I pulled out of here this time, but I have in the past. So Garbage Pail Kids are kind of my kryptonite. I love them for nostalgia purposes. Back in 1985, 86, 87, when they were popular, I was 6, 7, and 8. And this schizophrenic card uh, is a card that is actually a short print because out of all the Garbage Pail Kids that were out there, 
That's the garbage pail kid that crossed the line and society said, no, 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 you cannot make fun of a disability. So halfway through production, they pulled the schizophren card and they replaced it with Fran Fran. And as a result, it is pretty low. You can see the one star there. There's the first run of it and second run, depending on the asterisk on the back. There's also glossy backs and matte backs. But he was asking two bucks a card, and as you saw from a minute ago, these go from about ten to thirty dollars each. And he had four of them, so I went ahead and bought all four for two bucks each. And then there were a couple of the sister card. Remember, all garbage pail kids have an A and a B, and the sister card I, th I mean sometimes when you sell something it's good to have the sister card with it makes it a little bit more collectible and so i bought those as well so i got these six cards for 12 bucks and i feel pretty confident that i'm easily gonna walk with about 60 dollars from them so that was my second and final deal and that's a wrap on the auburn card show Again, it was great seeing so many of you out there. Come say hi next time if you didn't.